A long time ago, I made this video on Drozer. Drozer is a very cool tool that can be used to interact with the individual components of an Android app. But for a long time, it went without any updates and was not being supported at all, so it was getting pretty difficult to actually run it on modern systems. But fortunately, not too long ago, they actually finally updated it, so now it works with like more modern versions of Python and things like that that just make it way easier to work with. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Drozer and how to use it to interact with unprotected activities in an Android app. For this example, I'm going to be using an Android emulator, but this should work for any sort of physical or emulated device as long as you have an ADB connection. And this emulator is rooted. It's actually the same emulator that I used in the video where I walked through how to root an emulator. And I'll have a link to that video up here if you want to check it out. But for the purposes of this example, it shouldn't matter if your device is rooted or not. As long as you have USB debugging enabled and you can connect over ADB, you should be able to do everything that I do. And the application I'm going to be using for this example is AndroGoat, which is an app that I've used on several other videos as sort of like a demo platform. Among the many things it has for you to demo on this app, they also have a section for unprotected Android components. And this allows you to set a pin to protect some documents that you can then access using these unprotected components. And while we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and set a pin. It's going to be a very random number that no one could possibly guess. And now that we have our pin set, we have to verify our pin in order to log in and access those protected documents. So the next thing we need to do is install Drozer. We can do this by going to their GitHub page, which is with secure lab slash Drozer. And if we scroll down to the installation instructions, there are a few different ways you can install. I'm actually going to build from source just to get the most updated version of everything. So I'm going to run git clone and then the URL to that repository. And once that finishes cloning, I'm going to CD into the Drozer directory. And I'm going to run pip install period. So once that finishes installing, now I can run Drozer. And now we see that we have it installed. And here are those like help files and all the things that we can run with it. But in order to actually interact with our device, we actually need to download the Drozer agent. And if we go back to the GitHub, we see that we can download the latest agent right here. And there we see drozeragent.apk. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. So now that I have that agent downloaded, I'm going to make sure that I have my emulator connected over ADB by just running ADB devices. And then I'm going to install that Drozer agent APK using ADB. The reason we need an agent installed is because a lot of the things that you might want to do with Drozer is actually going to be interacting with those components of an Android app. And in a lot of cases, some of the things that you would want to test on those components would actually require you to build your own app. And the great thing about Drozer is it actually lets you sort of simulate those kind of things that you would build into a malicious app without having to actually build the app. You can kind of on the fly run ad hoc commands and things that sort of simulates the kind of things that you might see in an app that would be installed on the device. But now that we have that agent installed, I'm going to run that agent. And now you see down in the bottom, there's this embedded server with a button and I'm going to click that button, to turn it on. And now you see it says started embedded server on port 31415. And in order to run these commands with Drozer using that embedded server, I'm going to need to do some port forwarding. And we don't have to get into the weeds of what this is actually doing, but to do this, all we need to do is run adb forward tcp colon 31415 tcp colon 31415. So now that we have Drozer installed, we have the agent installed on our device, we have the server turned on, we have port forwarding enabled, now we can actually start using Drozer. And we can do this just by running Drozer console connect. And when you see this little ASCII art Android logo and you see the prompt that says DZ, that's when you know that it's working. So the first thing we need to do is find the package name of our application that we want to work with. Drozer has all kinds of commands that you can run and you can read into all of them that you want to check out if there's some that you want to know more about. But if we just run that list, that gives us the full list and a little description of every single command that they have available. And the first one that we want to run is app package list, which is going to list all the package names on the device. But if you're working with a device that has a bunch of applications on it, this could be difficult to sort of sift through that list to find the one you're looking for. So conveniently, they also have a dash F flag, which lets you give them a search term and it actually only returns the ones that match that search term. So I'm going to search for goat because the application that we're looking for is Andro goat. And there we go. It returned the package name of the application that we're looking for, which is owasp.sat.agoat. Now, usually whenever you're starting to look at something with Drozer, you're going to first want to look at the attack surface. And for this command or any other Drozer command you want to know more about, you can always run it and then dash H to get more information. 
So to run this command to get a tax surface information about a package, all we need to do is run the command and then the package name. So I will run app.package.attacksurface and then owasp.sat.agoat. And that tells us that there are two activities exported, one broadcast receiver exported, zero content providers exported, and one services exported. Also, the app is debuggable. For this video, I'm only going to look at activities, but all this is useful information if you're doing an assessment on an Android app. So to get more information about the activities, I'm going to run app.activity.info. And once again, if we pull up the dash H to get more information about it, we see that we just need to run app.activity.info dash dash package or dash A for a shorthand and then the package name. So I'm going to do exactly that with the dash A and then awasp.sat.agoat. And that shows us those two unprotected activities. We have sat.agoat.splash activity with no permissions, which is important. And then owasp.sat.agoat that access control one view activity, also with no permissions. That splash activity is actually pretty normal. Most applications will have at least one unprotected activity, which is sort of the screen that you see when you first launch the application. But if you see other exported activities, especially ones with no permissions, sometimes those can lead to some vulnerabilities. And in order to learn more about what this vulnerability could be, that's when we need to go to our reverse engineering and our static binary analysis. So I'm going to open up JetX and I'm going to take a look at the Android Goat APK file and see what that activity is actually doing. So if we take a look at that Android manifest file, we see here is that activity that we were looking at. And if we double click on it, it actually opens the code for that activity. We see on create is creating a download invoice button and it seems like that's where you're actually getting that access to those files that are supposed to be behind that pin that we set at the beginning of the video. And if we just search for that activity name, we can see where it might be being called. And right here on the last result, we see that it is verifying a pin and it is calling that activity. So if we double click on that, we see that there's this if statement right here where it's actually checking if the pin is correct. And then inside that if statement, after it checks that pin, it's going to make a toast that says pin verified. And then it's going to create this intent with our activity right here. So since that activity is being called after that pin is being verified, we should be able to access those protected files without needing the pin. The only thing we need to know now is how to actually start that activity. Fortunately, Drozer has a command called app activity start. And these commands can sometimes get complicated depending on how the activities are set up and how it works within the application. And that's where your reverse engineering with JetX comes in, making sure you understand how those activities are called. But since this activity seems to be called without any extra data URI or extras or anything like that, so we can just run app.activity.start dash dash component, the package name, and then the full package name and activity name. And when we run that, it opens up our app directly to that page where we can download the invoice that we weren't supposed to be able to access without that pin that we set at the beginning of the video. So this was just a basic example of how to use Drozer to access different components of an Android app. It can get much more complicated than this, and maybe I can go into it more in detail in a future video. Let me know if you want me to take a look at things like broadcast receivers and services and content providers and those kind of things. I'm honestly still learning about that kind of stuff and trying to get better at testing those kind of things. But if y'all are interested in that kind of stuff, I can try to make a video on that as well. But that's going to be it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you got some sort of value out of it, and I hope I'll see you in the next one.